Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about why we have VLANs. Our virtual local area networks are a layer two feature, which are implemented on our switches. And to understand why we have them, you need to understand the problem that they solve first. So looking at router operations first, you already know routers operate at layer three of the OSI stack. Hosts and separate IP subnets must send traffic via a router to communicate. That's a router's main job, routing traffic between different IP subnets. Security rules on routers or firewalls can be used to easily control traffic that is allowed between different IP subnets at layer three. For example, let's say all of your engineering hosts are in the 10.10.10.0/24 subnet and your accounts hosts are in 10.10.20.0/24. You can easily implement security rules on a router or a firewall to block traffic from the 10.10.10 subnet to the 10.10.20 subnet if your engineering host should never be talking to your accounting host. You'll actually see how to configure that when we do the access control list section later on. Routers do not forward broadcast traffic by default. They provide performance and security by splitting networks into smaller domains at layer three. Okay, so that's our router operations. Our switch operations, switches operate at layer two of the OSI stack, and they do forward broadcast traffic by default, unlike routers. So by default, a campus switched network is one large broadcast domain. Your switches flood broadcast traffic everywhere including between different IP subnets. And that raises performance and security concerns. If you have a look at an example local area network here. So we've just got a simple LAN, one switch here, and we've got some engineering PCs and some sales PCs that are plugged into the switch. The engineering and the sales PCs are in different IP subnets at layer three, and we've got a router to route traffic between them. If we send unicast traffic within the same IP subnet, so the sales PC2 at 10.10.20.10 wants to communicate with the sales PC1 at 10.10.20.11. So it sends some traffic with a destination IP address of 10.10.20.11. That will come into the switch. And as long as the switch has already learned the MAC address for sales PC1, the switch will just send it out that port that sales PC1 is connected into. So this is very good for performance and security. Traffic is only going exactly where it needs to go. If we were going to send unicast traffic between different IP subnets, so let's say a sales PC wants to talk to an engineering PC. So sales PC2 sends some traffic, it comes into the switch, the switch will then send that on to the router because the destination IP address is the engineering PC IP address, but the destination MAC address is the sales PC's default gateway. The router will then route the traffic over to the engineering subnet. It will send the traffic back down to the switch. And as long as the switch already learned the MAC address of the engineering PC1, the switch will just send it down to that PC. So as you can see, unicast traffic, whether it's within the same or between different subnets, it's always very good security and performance because traffic is only going exactly where it needs to go and you can easily implement security policies on the router to limit traffic between your IP subnets. If we didn't want to allow traffic between the sales and the engineering subnets, we could very easily do that with a security policy on our router or a firewall if it was a firewall there. But 
it's different for broadcast traffic. So let's have a look and see what's going to happen now. So in our example, the sales PC, PC2 sends out some broadcast traffic, like an ARP request, for example, and that comes into the switch. And what a switch does with broadcast traffic is it floods it out all parts apart from the one that it was received on. So the traffic goes absolutely everywhere and to the PCs that are both in the engineering subnet and in the sales subnet as well. So the problem this gives us is it affects security because the traffic bypasses the router or firewall layer 3 security policies. Maybe we did have a security policy on the router which is blocking traffic between the sales and the engineering PCs at layer 3, but when a sales PC sends out broadcast traffic, it bypasses that and it still hits the engineering PCs. So if somebody did some kind of layer 2 attack, this is a way that they could bypass your security policies. It also affects performance because every end host has to process the traffic, all of the sales PCs and all of the engineering PCs as well. It also affects performance by using bandwidth on links where the traffic is not required. To highlight that, let's look at a slightly different network topology here. So we've got the same switch in the middle with the sales and engineering PCs connected in there. And that switch is also connected to another switch in a different part of the building that has just got accounting PCs plugged in there. Again, when the sales PC sends in some broadcast traffic, it gets flooded out all ports on the switch. It hits the other switch and it gets flooded out all ports there as well. So the accounts PCs and the link to the switch that the accounts PCs are in, the traffic is getting flooded there as well when there's really no need to send the traffic there. So that was the problem. VLANs, our virtual local area networks, are the solution. We can increase performance and security in the LAN by implementing VLANs on our switches. VLANs segment the LAN into separate broadcast domains at layer 2. So VLANs are a layer 2 feature implemented on your switches. There's typically a one-to-one -one relationship between an IP subnet and a VLAN. So with the same network topology example, what we do is we create an engineering VLAN on the switch and we also create a sales VLAN on the switch. We put all of the engineering PCs and the router interface for the engineering subnet into the engineering VLAN, and we put all of the sales PCs and the router interface in the sales subnet into the sales VLAN. And the switch only allows traffic within the same VLAN. So what's going to happen now? You see, for unicast traffic within the same IP subnet, this is actually going to be the same. So sales PC2 sends some traffic with sales PC1 as the destination. It comes into the switch. The switch in our example has already learned the MAC address of sales PC1, so it just sends it out that port. So that was the same as before. The same for unicast traffic between different IP subnets. Sales PC2 is going to send some traffic to an engineering PC now. So it comes into the switch. And you know how I said that the switch only allows traffic within the same VLAN? Well, the destination MAC address is the sales PC2 default gateway on the router, which is also in the sales VLAN. So the switch will send the traffic up to the router only on that port because it had already learned its MAC address. The router will then route the traffic to the engineering VLAN and it will send it out the engineering interface. So it comes in on the switch in the engineering VLAN and the switch will then send the traffic to the engineering PC. It's allowed to do that because it's also in the engineering VLAN. So for unicast traffic, whether it's within the same subnet or between different subnets, that works the same really whether we're using VLANs or not. Where the big difference comes in and the big benefit is for broadcast traffic. So now sales PC2 sends out some broadcast traffic that hits the switch 
and it floods it out all parts, but only parts that are in the same VLAN. So it hits all of the other sales PCs and the sales interface on the router, but it does not hit any of the engineering PCs. So the traffic only gets flooded where it needs to go, so that improves security and performance. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.